Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Consider the following statement. Blue helmets are the military personnel of the UN that work alongside the UN police and civilian colleagues to promote stability, security and peace processes. The Indian Army developed the first ever all-women contingent in Sudan in 2007. Abe is an area on the border between South Sudan and the Sudan. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is 1 and 3 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to Abhi. This happens to be one of the regions which has become a source of conflict between Sudan and South Sudan. So where is it? It is between both these countries. This particular area has rich reserves of oil and it is also economically advantageous both for the people in Sudan as well as South Sudan. Abe is traditional homeland of the Engok Dinka, a tribal group with strong ethnic, cultural and linguistic ties to the Dinka of South Sudan. Misia herders, members of northern nomadic Arab tribe, seasonally transfers Abe and other north-south border areas with their cattle in search of water pasture in the dry season and to trade goods as well. So because there are some economic advantages which can be derived from this particular place, it has become an area of conflict between the countries of Sudan and South Sudan. Now what we have is the Indian Army has deployed its platoon of women peacekeepers in the Sudan's hostile region which happens to be Abe. And when we look into the practice question, the first statement is right. Why? That is because yes, the blue helmets are the military personnel. As you can see from the image, all the women are wearing blue color caps. So blue helmets or blue caps are the people who are present in those peacekeeping operations. So the first statement is right. When you look into the second statement, the Indian Army deployed the first ever all-women contingent in Sudan in 2007. This happens to be a wrong statement. Why? Because it is not Sudan, but instead it is Liberia. So this happens to be the wrong statement. When you look into the third statement, yes, Abe is an area on the border between South Sudan and Sudan. The first and the third statements are right. The second statement is wrong. So the answer to this would be C. And when we speak about the women peacekeepers, they are usually deployed in most of the regions primarily because they would be able to understand the emotions of the women in that particular area. They would be able to connect with the women and the local population and at the same time, they would also understand the grievances of the sexual victims in that particular area. So the peacekeepers in such areas will mostly be women so that they would be able to have a personal connection with the women as well as children. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following is are correctly matched? 6 degree channel separates Indra Point and Indonesia. 8 degree channel separates Lakshadweep and Maldives. 10 degree channel separates the Andaman Islands and Nicobar Islands. Which of the following is correctly matched? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the 6 degree channel. So this 6 degree channel is basically one which separates the Indra point and Indonesia. What is this Indra point? When we speak about Indra point, it is situated in Campbell Bay on the Great Nicobar Island. It is the southernmost point of India and is only about 150 km from Sumatra, Indonesia. It is located in Great Nicobar Tehasil. This place got the name Indra point after Indira Gandhi visited the place during her tenure as the Prime Minister of India and the southernmost point of Indian Union is Indra Point which was previously known as Pygmalion Point or the Parsons Point. This point is located only 173 km from Ronda Island in Indonesia's northernmost province of Banda Esa. Then what we have is the 8 degree channel. We also have the 10 degree channel as well. So the 10 degree channel is what separates Andaman from Nicobar. And then what we have is 8 degree channel which separates Lakshadweep. We have the Minikoi Island and what we have is Maldives. As part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section, what is the 9 degree channel? Please put it on the comment section. What is this 9 degree channel? And at international level, we also have similar channels as well. What is it? Please mention on the comment section. 
now let's look into the next practice question the Arab Spring, a series of anti-government protests, uprisings and armed rebellions started in which among the following countries? Algeria, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia. The answer to this is Tunisia. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to Arab Spring. What is this Arab Spring? Arab Spring was a wave of pro-democracy protests and uprisings that took place in the Middle East and North Africa. The regions of protest include Egypt, Tunisia, Yemen, Syria, Libya and Morocco. But where did it start? It started in Tunisia. Various economic and political causes, including increased population, leading to unemployment were the causes that led to Arab Spring, a series of anti-government protests, uprisings and armed rebellions, the end goal of uprising was an increase in democracy and freedom. What exactly is the issue? When you look at all these Arab countries, most of them are run by the authoritarian regime. They do not have the democracy as well. Some of the basic rights that all of us have, they did not have these rights as well. And at the same time, human rights were being abused. There were continuously unemployment crises which were increasing. They were not able to afford the food products as well. They were not getting any employment opportunities opportunities as well. Added to it, there was increasing authoritarian regime leading to human right violations as well. So these people felt if there has to be a major cause which is driving all these issues, it has to be because of the authoritarian regime. So they wanted to overthrow this authoritarian regime and ultimately replace this authoritarian regime with the democracy. So these protests that erupted in Tunisia and started spreading to multiple other countries is what is called as Arab Spring. So there was unemployment crisis, corruption, other major issues which are broiling their country. So to replace this authoritarian regime with a democracy they came up with this Arab Spring. So where did it start? It started in Tunisia. Now let's look into the next practice question. Sajol Kanje, an ancient traditional form of the modern polo was played in the state of Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland. The answer to this is Manipur. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to this game called as the Sajol Kangje. So Sajol Kangje is nothing but the modern polo. Once upon a time, this was a game that was practiced in Manipur. So historically, if you say where exactly it originated, many people say it originated in the state of Manipur. It was supported by the kings of Manipur as well. And what we have is one of the horses called as the Manipur pony. The Manipur pony is referenced in records dating back to the 14th century and has a powerful cultural significance in the Manipuri society. So so what is the Sajal Konglai? This happens to be a modern day polo where you have a horse, you have a pony, you would also have the rider as well. So what they will play is this particular game which is equivalent to the modern day polo game. So this happens to be one of the important questions and this can also be asked in your preliminary examination. And when you look into the Manipur pony, its numbers are dwindling. The 17 quinquennial livestock census 2003 recorded 1898 ponies. The the number fell to 1101 in the 19th census in 2012 in a random survey carried out in 2014. However, the Manipur society found it is difficult to count even 500 of the animals. In order to ensure that we overcome this particular issue, they also came up with Manipur Pony Conservation and Developmental Policy of 2016 where they wanted to conserve the Manipur Pony. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. Now let's look into the next practice question. Though coffee and tea both are cultivated on hill slopes, there is some difference between them regarding their cultivation. In this context, consider the following statement. Coffee plant requires a hot and humid climate of tropical areas, whereas tea can be cultivated in both tropical and subtropical areas. Coffee is propagated by seeds, but tea is propagated by stem cuttings only. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is one only. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2010. 
why have we taken this practice question because of the reference to the organic coffee when you look into this article the article makes a reference to the anchunad valley where is this anchunad valley this happens to be a place where in the state of kerala so this can also be asked in your preliminary examination so remember anchunad valley is a place in the state of kerala now let's look into the fact of the day the fact of the day for today's discussion is pendency of cases in the judiciary we have discussed about pendency of the cases in couple of our cna videos we have also explained in our earlier daily quiz videos as well but today as we speak about pendency of cases there might be number of issues as a result of which there is pendency of cases in the judiciary but our primary focus today is because of the government there is increase of cases so the government is a major litigant and this happens to be one of the major cause as to why there is pendency of cases in the judiciary the other reason being the number of judges in the lower judiciary when you look at india india has about 21 judges for every million people as the government recently informed the rajya sabha china by contrast has about 159 judges for every million people so one of the major drawbacks for india is that we have terribly low number of judges serving a very large population and the government has become the major litigant when it comes to the litigation and disputes in our country on june 13 2017 the department of justice of the government of india released an action plan to reduce government litigation the action plan was in response to the fact that 46% of the total pending cases in the court system pertains to the government so as much as 46% of the cases in our court is primarily because of the government in 2018 the law commission of india in its 230th report noted that the government is the biggest litigant in the system similarly the government's own status note on the national litigation policy 2010 comes to the same conclusion as well so with this we can come to a conclusion that the government is the major litigant and that is the reason why we have pendency of cases in the judiciary in order to overcome these issues the government has also taken steps as well one of the steps that the government has taken is coming up with the national litigation policy of 2010 this basically means that the government realized that there are large number of cases where the government is part of it and this is actually increasing the number of cases in the indian judicial system so we from our side from the government side we have to do something so what does it do it comes up with a policy and this particular policy basically makes sure that the preventive measures are taken and government is able to transform itself into an efficient and responsible litigant so what did it do it basically came up with the preventive measures so each time a particular case is being filed we have to ensure whether it is actually required or not and in case there are any disputes between one department and another it has to be sorted as soon as possible without filing a case and what we will also have is empowered agency which will look into such disputes between the departments so basically before making an appeal you have to sort it out amongst yourself so that this is not filed in the court of law so the national litigation policy was based on an idea that more number of cases are going from the government side from the government to the courts and the tribunals so this has to be reduced that is why the government came up with the national litigation policy of 2010 added to it the government also introduced limbs project which stands for legal information management briefing system it intends to connect 55 ministries and their department for litigation management aptly named for it seeks to connect the various limbs of the governance of our country as on january 3rd limb shows that there are 6 lakhs 22000 cases involving the government pending before the court system so what is this limbs basically this will have entry of the court case details arbitration module who are the advocate representing the government and the data will be safe and secure in this system who are the users or who are the people who are part of this particular case what has been the status of this case and the message board displaying what this case is all about so basically it will give us an entire viewpoint about what this case is 
who are the parties within the government what is the case status everything so if there is a dispute where government is one of the party into it all the idea about that case will be presented in this complete web based issue so basically what are the advantages integration with websites of various high courts district courts and tribunals such as cat aptel nclt so on and so forth provides complete solution about daily proceedings integration with e office to ease office procedures marking of important cases for the nodal officer provision of multi ministry multi party cases periodic report on the basis of case entry and cnr update monitoring of financial implication on litigation cases and period wise marking of cases so this basically means if we are not able to address the pendency of the cases the government is also bound to suffer on one side this will lead to agony of the litigants the advocates and the judiciary and at the same time this also weakens the law and order in the country and more the cases more is the money that the government will have to spend and it is eating into the public funds as well these are some of the concerns with respect to this issue in order to overcome this particular issue what we can do is have preventive measures as we initially discussed and at the same time when the national litigation policy was drafted in the year 2010 they also came up with a proposal where they said that service matters if they are present should be sorted out without going to the court of law so what is the service matter let's say for example there is a person who is employed with the government of india or with the relevant state government if he has an issue he should not be going to the court of law directly everything should be fixed within the system governmental system only when it is a matter which will require a constitutional interpretation only then it should go to the court of law so such measures can also so be taken as well it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best